Hi guys, DIY Mark here with my review of the Milwaukee seven piece cordless combo kit. I'll be comparing the tools of this kit with my DeWalt and Makita, evaluating them on ease of use, performance, and of course cost. I'm gonna to try to help you answer the question, should I buy this kit? Is there a better deal out there? And what should I expect from these tools? Okay. I'm stringing this video together and I realize it's becoming a lot longer than I anticipated. But there's some really good stuff here that I want to share with you about the tools in this kit. So spoiler alert, I thought what I'd do is provide the summary up front here for those of you that just want the headlines. So here goes. I rate this Milwaukee kit three out of five stars. I'm downgrading it primarily because you can purchase the tools in the bundle individually for less money than the $9.99 price at Home Depot. And several of the tools in this kit are really not that terrific or they're low use tools that you might otherwise pass over and purchase a better model in the Milwaukee line. That said, I found the quality of these tools top notch and the tool to own if power and runtime are of key interest to you. So if you're interested in hearing more on how I arrived at my conclusion, and a bit more about each of the tools in the kit, stick around. As they say, now back to our regularly scheduled program. So the kit includes seven common construction tools, two five amp hour batteries, plus a single port charger, and two soft carrying bags. So let's quickly look at the individual tools, determine what works and what doesn't. Starting with the reciprocating saw, I first tried it for demolition. I equipped it with a new wrecking blade and used it on this pallet. The pallet had lots of nails and some of the slats were hardwood. The sawzall easily sliced through the nail embedded wood and made short order of it. I then changed the blade to perform some fine work on eighth inch mild steel. I found the sawzall controllable and again it made short work of the task. Comparing it to my Makita, performance and ergonomics were about the same. Both are the same weight and handled similarly. I wasn't fond of the blade chain mechanism on the Milwaukee. The Makita grabs the tang of the blade on insertion, where on the Milwaukee they make you pull a lever down and insert it at the same time. Minor pain. I wish they would change the design on these saws so when you push the lever down it would eject the blade like my jigsaw. That way I don't have to grab a hot blade with the chance of burning my fingers trying to remove it. Moving on to the circular saw, the Milwaukee in this set is a six and a half inch unit. It comes with a 24 tooth framing blade which gave clean, fast cuts in dimensional lumber. Performance wise, it was very similar to my Makita. Both spin the blade faster than their predecessors at 5,000 RPM. I found that spinning the blade faster gives a much better cut in more delicate woods like veneer plywood, leaving less chip out. Adding a high tooth blade is the best for these types of cuts. Since I do use my cordless circular saw for interior work, I have equipped my Makita with their optional dust port, which allows connection to a vacuum, which is nice to have when working in a client's house or in my shop. The Milwaukee, unfortunately, doesn't have this capability. For me, the workhorse tools in this kit are the drill and the driver, impact driver. First, looking at the drill, the Milwaukee is bigger, heavier, and more badass than my Nikita or DeWalt. I typically use smaller, lighter, two amp hour batteries when using the drill and the driver. You really notice the difference in weight when you're raising the drill up over your head to do vertical work, or when you're trying to climb a ladder. I don't find I need bigger batteries when using these tools. The smaller, lighter batteries give me most of the day runtime, and I will easily trade runtime for a tool that's easier to handle. You'll want to think about adding a smaller battery to this kit for those tools. While the Milwaukee is a bit heavier than the uh, Makita, uh, one thing that I do like about this Milwaukee is its power. And I recently was working with my plumber and he uses a lot of these uh, one inch spade bits that have a self-feeding tip on them, which really tax the Makita. And uh, as you'll see in a second, this Milwaukee has no problem with it. This is a uh, mock-up. I glued three pieces of 2x4 to kind of mock up a typical sill plate or top plate or double top plate. Let's watch how fast it goes through this. It's 
actually harder to get out than get through. Turning attention to the impact driver, the differences between the Makita and the Milwaukee are slim. Both have variable impact adjustments, which can be handy when driving into more delicate materials. Performance is different, but equal between the two. Again, the larger, heavy batteries on the Milwaukee changed the ergonomics of the tool and made it less friendly to use. Both my older DeWalt and the Makita are easier to handle with their two amp hour batteries. I don't own a cordless angle grinder, so my only comparison is to my DeWalt corded angle grinder. Having a large battery on the Milwaukee makes it a bit heavier, but not having a cord to deal with is really nice. It features a swivel blade guard, which is nice when the sparks and slag are flying in your direction. It can also easily be detached, but reinstall was a bit more fussy. The kit did not come with any stones or wheels, but after adding a metal cutting blade, it had no problem cutting this mild steel, and I was able to get good control on where I made the cut. I dislike the safety switch, and I will probably disable it since it's annoying, but I like how the tool started up, fairly soft and not much jerk, something that is superior to the startup on my Corda DeWalt. The angle grinder is the only tool in the lot that does not have an onboard LED. And I suspect that Milwaukee engineers punted on this tool because there's not a good place to put one that wouldn't be obscured by the wheel or the guard. But it sure shit could use one. I call this the throwaway flashlight. That's probably too strong a words for it. It does put out a nice bright beam, worlds better than flashlights that we used a decade ago. But when compared to my DeWalt flashlight, it's, which is really more of a lantern. I throw rocks at this Milwaukee. Once you've used a lamp that is superior like this DeWalt, the Milwaukee flashlight will be at the, on the table at your next garage sale. Ironically, Milwaukee sells a similar lamp to the DeWalt, the 2352, but they decided to go with this lower quality light in the combo kit, and that's a shame. The kit includes a half-inch impact wrench, which was previously a promotion bonus item for the six-piece set. It is now included in the seven-piece set. It has a three-level control dial to dial in the torque that you want. I tried testing the impact wrench by driving lags into two-inch thick, hard maple. I had to be careful as it'll easily shear off five 16-inch lag bolts on level two and three. It had no problem removing a 3 8 lag bolt that I had torqued with a calibration wrench to 40, 40 foot-pounds. This tool has plenty of torque. I really hated the lock ring on the socket retainer. Getting sockets on and off is a real pain. I had to use a screwdriver to pry off the sockets. You would think the engineers would come up with something better, a more convenient way to retain the sockets. While this is industry standard and no real fault of Milwaukee, there really is a need for some innovation here. For my work, this would, would again be a fairly low use tool, but for some applications where you need to drive a lot of large diameter lags or bolts, it may prove to be useful. Just be careful not to shear off the heads as this tool will easily do. The whole seven piece kit fits into two Milwaukee branded bright red bags. They're appropriately sized and adequate quality though not quite as nice as my DeWalt, which has more interior pockets for small items like blades, wrenches, and bits. So the real question is, should you buy this kit? Often you can save some money when the manufacturer bundles tools together. So let's look at the cost if you were to buy these tools individually. If you pay full price for each of the individual tools at Home Depot, it totals at just under $1,100, and you still need to buy batteries, a charger, and some carrying bags. But if you get a bit more savvy and shop around, you can get the bare tool cost to under $850 without too much work. Get even more creative and purchase all the tools individually except the drill and the driver, and then purchase a drill driver combo kit, like item 2897, as a two-piece set, which includes the same batteries and chargers as this kit, and the cost is only $895. That's a hundred bucks less than the retail price of $9.99 for this seven piece set. You'll only be short the bags and you can save even more if you watch for manufacturer promotions. So I don't see any savings with this seven piece kit. 
Plus, when you buy a combo kit, you always seem to end up with a tool or two that you really don't need, or one that's not as nice as another in their line. Kind of like this throwaway flashlight, for example. So in conclusion, the Milwaukee tools are great quality. They seem like the go-to tool when you need power and runtime. But for my use, which is more often finished carpentry and cabinet work, I still like many of my Makita tools better. I downgrade the kit as a whole because you really don't save any money buying them together and because you can purchase better individual tools and make better choices. So four stars for the Milwaukee tools, but just three stars on this seven piece set itself. So good luck with your search. I hope this helps. And as always, thanks for watching.